Here's a quick review of how the TVM solver works on the TI calculators. First you hit the Apps button and you see the first op option here is Finance. So I'm going to hit Enter and the very first application here is the TVM solver. So I hit Enter again. Now the different variables are N. N stands for the number of compoundings. So if this was going to be uh, 10 years each month, then it would be 10 times 12, or 120 different compoundings. I is the interest rate. So let's suppose that we had a 3.5% interest rate. PV stands for present value. Um, another name for this would be the initial deposit. So if I'm going to put $1,200 into the bank, that's what I would type in there. I might want to put a minus sign on the front of it uh, if I'm thinking of this as leaving my pocket and going into the bank. The TVM solver works under the, the cash flow model that we've talked about. For payment, this is where you enter any value that you're making as a regular monthly payment or a periodic payment. So if I just have a a savings account where I'm not adding to it, I've just got a, a principal that's sitting there, I would make this a zero. Future value is what we're going to solve for. I'm going to put that to be zero right now. PY and CY stands for payments per year and compoundings per year. So usually this is 12, but you can change this to anything else that you want. And we need to have this set at end. Um, this changes whether the compounding is done at the end of the month or the beginning of the month. And for ordinary annuities, it's always at the end of the month. And so that will have a, a nice effect when we put a payment in here. So if I had uh, put $1,200 in the bank for 10 years, compounded monthly, 3.5% annual interest rate, I'm ready to find out the future value. So I'm going to go over here and hit the Alpha key and then the Enter key, that's the Solve function, and it has computed for me that I will have $1,702.01 in the account. If I had a monthly payment, I could also add that in here. Suppose I added $50 a month. That, of course, would change my balance 10 years in the future, and I have to resolve for that. So now I'd have $8,873.64. I can also use this to solve for other things. Um, if I have taken out a loan, let's say I bought a $100,000 house, and I don't know the payment, we can solve for that. I want the future value to be zero, so I've paid it all off. Interest rate will probably be something like 5 or 6%. Let's put 5.5. .5. And let's suppose this was a 30-year loan. Now my payment can be solved for, and I see that I've got to pay $567.79 a month. Let's suppose I'm able to pay $600. Then I could go back up and see how many payments that will take. I can solve for that number. And here it will only take 316 payments, so I'll shave a long time off of that loan by paying more. And I can solve for any of these that I don't know, given the other ones.